Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for joining me this week. So this week I'm going to be talking about my top 10 ways to use ChatGPT. I incorporate the use of this generative AI is fully embedded in my workflow. So if you're interested in this topic, then please keep on watching. Okay, so this week I'm going to be talking about the ways that I use ChatGPT in my everyday workflow. The first way that I use ChatGPT is to generate lesson plan ideas as a starting point. Now, ChatGPT is not always going to give you the best lesson, the ideal lesson in terms of your teachers in your school and your context, but at least you're not starting from a blank page and you can use the ideas that it generates as a starting point and build upon those ideas. The second way that I use ChatGPT a lot is to draft skeleton emails to either parents, students, colleagues, or people in the community. And I love how ChatGPT always generates really well-crafted emails that are polite. Of course, I have to go back and change and edit different things so that it is 100% tailored to the email that I want to send. But I think what ChatGPT generates is a great starting point in terms of emails to people. Now, the third way that I use ChatGPT is to generate a starting point for guiding questions for a unit of study. Instead of starting with a blank page, we can ask ChatGPT to generate different guiding questions, whether they're conceptual questions or whether they're debatable questions based on the really important conceptual idea you want students to have. So give ChatGPT the important conceptual idea and then ask it to generate questions, conceptual questions that actually elicit deep conceptual understanding. Now, the fourth way that I use ChatGPT is just to draft generalizations, which are statements of conceptual understanding. Sometimes starting with a blank piece of paper is quite daunting. And most of my prompts when I'm crafting a generalization to ChatGPT is, can you please write this in a sentence of relationship? And I talk about two concepts. Maybe it's quadratic functions, discriminant and, and roots of functions. And it will generate a lovely statement of conceptual understanding that sometimes I have to tweak. The fifth way that I use ChatGPT is to generate rubrics with descriptors. And ChatGPT is fantastic at generating this. It actually generates in a table format. It's a little bit difficult to copy. So you, I can either screen grab it, but then you can't edit it. Or what I end up doing is just creating the table and copying and pasting the descriptors across. But the more detail that you give in your prompt, the better your rubric will be. So ChatGPT is a great way to create rubrics with descriptors. Now, the sixth way that I use ChatGPT is to generate a list of different active learning activities. So I like to use active learning engagements with my students. And sometimes I just rely on the same old activities, such as a matching activity, and it's great to get different ideas from ChatGPT about different kinds of active learning strategies that you want to start incorporating. The sixth way I use ChatGPT is to brainstorm a list of different ways for students to metacognitively reflect. So I might ask ChatGPT for different metacognitive prompts for students to show me whether they understand a particular concept and for students to reflect on their learning themselves. Now, the eighth way that I use ChatGPT is to generate some lesson ideas to help with classroom behavioral management and how to motivate engaged students. So sometimes I want some different ideas of, let's say I have a challenging student, they come to lessons, they're really demotivated, they're not interested in learning, and maybe that's because of past bad experiences. I'm gonna ask ChatGPT for different ideas to help with classroom behavioral management. And the ninth way that I use ChatGPT is to list misconceptions or generate a concept attainment activity on a particular concept. So I might ask ChatGPT, what are some of the misconceptions about this particular concept? And I might use that as a discussion in class, or I can ask ChatGPT to generate a concept attainment activity where we have yes examples of a particular concept and no examples of a particular concept. And students look at the yes and no examples to try and craft a statement of conceptual understanding for themselves. 
And then the last way that I use ChatGPT that I find really useful is to brainstorm a list of different ways to collect qualitative evidence of learning. So I like to reframe assessment as collecting evidence of learning. And we want to collect evidence of learning just not through grades and numerical scores, but through qualitative data. So ChatGPT will give you a lovely long list, as many as you want, of different ways to collect qualitative data. So thank you so much for joining me this week. I hope you found these top 10 ways to use ChatGPT useful. If you have any great suggestions on how you use ChatGPT, then please put it in the comment section below. Thank you so much for joining me this week and I hope to see you next time. Bye.